Welcome back to Lamb's Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to focus on Glassnode. Now, as you know from the past, I'm always berating Glassnode because what they do is they rejigger the same charts and, so, and show a million different versions of the same data. But today, they put out some really good long-term data and they had made some adjustments, adjustments that are really, really important I'm going to show you. So my framework for anyone that's new here is that we're in a bear market, both in crypto and equities and bonds for that matter. Now, what I'm going to show you is why we're in a bear market, but I think we're 50% there. We're maybe over 50%. Because if you look, let's go to the equities market. Yes, this is a cryptoverse channel, but we're going to go to equities. And equities, uh, part one of the equity decline was a compression of the price to earnings ratio. Basically, valuation multiples have been compressing and they're going to compress more. But part two, which is why I think we're halfway there in the, the bear market, both for crypto and equity, part two is where you're seeing the E in the PE ratio decline. Why do I say that? Because the third quarter earnings are coming out any day now. And... Uh, if you saw my previous video on the ISM survey, the ISM PMI survey finally began to decline. And I think it's going to decline rapidly because I think we're on the cusp of, re of a recession. Okay, so let's go back to crypto. Remember, crypto is macro, macro is crypto. So everything's going to be moving together, including equities and Bitcoin and all that. So let's go to the glass node charts that I actually really, really like today. So let's get started. The first one I want to show you is this. This is um, a really good chart because first of all, I like visual charts with colors, number one. And number two, I like that it combines two information points, two data points with one chart. So what you're looking here is actually the price of Bitcoin, but within that, it's showing you the accumulation distribution. And if it's uh, being distributed, if, it's, if uh, investors are selling, it's yellow. If they're accumulating, it's uh, like a purplish color. And actually, they've tagged it. You can see A for accumulation. And on the chart here, you can see E for uh, equilibrium. So what they want to do, what they're showing is that we've got an, uh, an, a, an analogy. We, we're seeing a similar situation that we saw and the bottom of 2008 here. See, on the right side here where we are now is similar to what we saw in 2018, I should say, and that was a major market bottom. So it looks like we're in the midst, in the middle, or even past the middle of a major long-term bottom. So let's go to the next chart. Now this chart here shows you, I gotta move myself again here. It shows you uh, between April 2022 and October, it shows you the accumulation distribution trend trend, trend by cohort, by tranche. And what, what do I mean by that? It's shown you, um, if you look here on top, greater than 10,000 K holders of Bitcoin and those fairly wealthy people. And then on the bottom, less than people that hold less than one Bitcoin. If you look here, uh, in June of 2022, that was a short-term bottom, we saw blue both from uh, whales and from uh, short-term holders. So basically, you want to see blue. If you look here in the legend here, where you got blue is where accumulation is, and where it's red, it's people are selling. So we don't have blue yet. We don't have a little blue here, and they're pointing out whales accumulating. So we have some accumulation of yells, but whales, but not enough. You want everything to be blue here, but still we're seeing some signs of the beginning of a long-term bottom. Now here's where I, it starts to get good. This is where I, I, uh, Glassnode adjusted some data and I actually think it was um, very, very good work from Glassnode. And I'm not being paid or sponsored by Glassnode. I just think their work is quite good lately. So here we go. This shows you where the major bottoms were. 
And, and this indicator is looking at percent of supply, total supply. Remember that. This is the percentage of total supply that's in profit. And at the market bottoms, and this is in green, they highlight in green, the major market bottoms, we had about 40% of Bitcoin, total Bitcoin supply in prof profit. So we had 40% in 2015, and I'm covering that right now. 41, 42% in the major 2008-2019 market bear. So that's the bottom. And during the COVID crash of around March, April 2020, we had 47% uh, total supply and profit. But now, and the point I want to make here is during the 2021-2022 bear market, yes, we've reached that green bottom level, but we're at 50 to 52%. So it's not that low. But here's where glass nodes work gets um, some good credit. They've done some great work. What they did is they took away, they removed all of that Bitcoin volume, Bitcoin supply, I should say, that Satoshi has and that's been lost. As you recall, years ago, there have been so many coins that were lost. And so they've adjusted for that. Actually, I can go right here and show you. What they've done is they removed a supply. So they had to make some adjustments. They're assuming that supply that has been, hasn't been active for over seven years, they're assuming that's been lost. And that's about 3.7 million Bitcoin. And if you adjust for that, what you get is this. Now, when you look at supply and profit, it's gone from, remember we said 50, 51%, it's too, it was pretty high. It's moved down from that level. Here they say 51%, down to 39% on an adjusted level. So now we're starting to equalize or equal the bottoms of the COVID crash and almost the 2018, 2019 crash. So we're getting closer to a major bear market bottom. And that's why I like this work that Les Note has done. So I could show you one more. They've, had, they've done this adjustment for other charts. Let's just do one more. Here, they're shown Bitcoin's net unrealized profit and loss. And you could see in red, and this is highlighted with the blue bars here, we've had 88 days where we've had some major unrealized losses. So that's not as many days as we had in 2018-19, where we had 134 days. And if you go up here, or I'm, I'm moving a chart up to 2014-15, we had a huge record 301 days where we had unrealized losses. But if you adjust for those, if you remember those 3.7 million Bitcoin that were lost, if you make those adjustments, that 88 days that I'm showing you here is going to change to 119 days. So now we're getting closer to previous major market bottoms for Bitcoin. But as I told you, I think we're maybe halfway, maybe even over halfway there. So we're not there yet to major Bitcoin and crypto and equity and bond market bottom, but we're getting closer. So one last point, how do we know we've reached, we're reaching or reached a major market bottom? I think the key point is, and I said this before, is when we are starting to reach a major market bottom where, and where the Fed's starting to pivot or about to pivot, you're going to see the Fed breaking things. And I mentioned all kinds of things that could be broken, uh, pension funds, hedge funds, the bond market's uh, losing its liquidity, and even equity market is losing its, losing its liquidity. So one place to look at is historical realized volatility, and that's calculated, like it says, historically, but also forward volatility. And that's calculated by looking at an implied volatility from the Black-Scholes-Merton model. That is not high yet. I mean, the VIX, if you look at it, it's pretty high, but it's not very high. I think the VIX is about 30 right now. Let, actually, we could look at it right now. We could, look, we could get a live VIX. Yeah, we're at 33. 
I'm clicking on it right here. We're at 33. That number, my friends, could actually double. So it could get much higher. So that's how we know we're getting closer to a major market bottom. But, but the point of today and the key takeaway is that number one, we're in a bear market. Number two, we're over 50% of the way there, and think of it like a marathon. If you've ever run a, a race, so that doesn't have to be a marathon, it could be anything, it could be a 5K. It feels, the race feels a lot easier, even though you should be more tired after you've reached the 50% point, right? You should be more tired after you've run half of the marathon because you know, you've been running for who knows how long and your legs are getting tired, but mentally you feel like, ah, the halfway point is there. And that's how I feel with the market. With at 50% of the way, and now we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, thank you all for listening. Please check out our other videos that explain more of how to determine short-term and long-term volatility, then charts. And I have a, a, a presentation on how macros Bitcoin and Bitcoin and macro, and that basically focuses on liquidity in the U.S. dollar. Well, thank you all for listening and like us and please uh, subscribe.